Good morning, folks. We are two days away from the release of the new James Webb Space Telescope images, but the satellite is in our news today for another reason. We're starting with our star, and we have two days to watch here as there was no morning news show yesterday. Several flashes and even some plasma ejecta is visible, but still, not much fired our way. We can see the beginnings of the solar awakening, as hopefully we all recall the next major uptick is expected in a couple more weeks. But we did get that M-class solar flare about 36 hours ago and several smaller flares as well. At least the geomagnetic conditions have quieted substantially from the geomagnetic storm we had two days ago due to the return of calm in the solar wind. And even here, a bit before the 5.9 month cycle peak, we're on eruption watch due to the numerous plasma filaments, some of considerable size. And also, of course, because of the sunspots. A couple large groupings on the disk at the moment, but the big ones have benign beta magnetic classification. Positive and negative magnetism is pretty well split at those groups and not interacting, but magnetism morphology at a sunspot group can change in an hour, so these still need a close eye as they face Earth today and tomorrow. Filaments and flares are the name of the game right now in terms of what we're watching for. Folks, we are opening up the new textbook to page 79 and finding the chart of changes. Every expected change on the Earth, planets, and even the nearby stars is indicative of a major magnetic shift due to the galactic current sheet. Of course, the Neptune thermal collapse came out after the book was published, but the focus today is the dust. The galactic current sheet, while it's changing the electromagnetic environment of our solar system, should also be bringing the dust, a crucial aspect of triggering the great solar flash. And as we detailed a page earlier in the text, there have been three confirmation that this is indeed what we are seeing. The sun's outermost corona, taking more dust, becoming brighter. The main section of the corona shows increased dust content and the interplanetary space between the planets, all showing signs of that increasing dust content. And now, we know that the James Webb Space Telescope is experiencing not only more dust than expected, but bigger hits than expected. Micrometeoroids, or teeny tiny, often dust size or smaller, strikes to things in space, and James Webb has already taken five more than expected, and the last one was way bigger than expected. They are praying it's just been bad luck so far, but already acknowledge perhaps they've miscalculated how much dust would be impacting the spacecraft, of course. Because telescope missions don't have the galactic current sheet, cyclical recurrence of the solar system shift, and the galactic dust in their toolbox, but you do. We greatly appreciate your support. To learn more, find our playlists in the description box below the video. Find our ebook PDFs at the links in the description box below the video. That's observerranch.podia.com. We've got shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.